Nice pass underneath, and a good finish. Second chance in there with a bucket, Potemski. Nice work there by Potemski. Good answer there from Cape. They're ready to go, Glenn. Should be a good one. 2-2 two -two game. Driving into the paint, puts a left-hander up off the window. Good, nice shot by Brett Shelton Hoskins. Shelton Hoskins, he's one of those guys that that you know has chipped in uh, in specific games, aside from you know the big three. He's more than capable of, of uh, filling it up himself in his own right. Working it around the perimeter of the Vikings, looking for an open shot, good baseline move, dish off. And Shell has his shot blocked out of bounds by Brewington. Good work by Brewington, good defense down low. We talked about Shell in, in our pregame. Uh, more, than, more than willing and, and great touch around the rim. So you're going to have to block him out and defend him. Tolson took a three-point shot, no good. They released a player the Panthers did, lost the handle a little, puts up the shot. It goes and he'll go to the line. Gamber, and I'll tell you, this, this kid... It, you know, I saw them last season, Glenn, take on St. Elizabeth, and you know, he was a guy that, that stood out for sure for that group. Um, he's grown a little bit. You can tell he's put on, you know, a little bit of weight as well. And as I said, this season's been impressive, right around 18 points per game as the second leading scorer for this Polytech group. 18 points, Glenn, that's leading a lot of teams in the state. So. Got that right. He completes the uh, three-point play, so a 7-2 lead for the home team Panthers. The foul was on Tolson. Quickly down the other end. Good ball movement. And there's a whistle and a foul in the lane. Yeah, they got him from behind. I'll tell you what, it looked like Little was going to go up for the jam. Or I'm sorry, um, wrong Pulse. team. Leggins was going to okay. go up for the jam there. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. runway was clear, but he got tripped up from behind. Yeah. Foul goes on Brewington. We're early in this one. Kate down by five to Polytech. Good pass inside. They move it back out. Polytech's defense, man defense, is tenacious early on. Nice oh, play. there you go. Good screen underneath and laying it up and in. Off the glass is Leggins. Yeah, nice work. Good patience by Leggings. He knew he had a guy behind him that was going to fly by. Good pump fake. He was able to finish. One possession game now, 7-4. Pass inside was tipped. Releasing down the floor and using his body to perfection and his length and laying it up and in is Zimmerman. I love this kid's game, Glenn. He's a guy that plays under control. He's got a high basketball IQ. Always seems to make the right play. Didn't panic right there in transition with a defender chasing him down and a good finish. One point ball game now. 4-0 run by the Vikings. Out on the left wing, three point shots too strong. Brewington ran it down, tried to save it, does underneath, but they can't get the shot to go. Now a fast break, going the other way. Tolson is fouled. That should be in the act of shooting. He should go to the line. Great work. I'll tell you what, good job here by, by Cape getting out in transition. I mean, they're doing a good job of getting the rebound. I mean, it's been a few times now in a row where Potemski's gotten the ball, and he knows exactly where to look. He's gotten the ball to Tolson. He's gotten the ball to Leggins. He's gotten the ball to Zimmerman. These guys have been able to get out and run these last few possessions. And after a slow start, um, this last minute or so, they've been able to claw back with a chance to take the lead here. First free throw is good by Tolson. The foul went against number 12, Jalen Anderson. Two team fouls on a Polytech, one on Cape. 5.09 to go in the opening quarter. We're tied at seven, and the second one is missed. So a tie ball game. Love it, Glenn. It's just like we started it. Yep. <laughs> Looking for a screen, doesn't get it. And now a floater in the lane's no good, but a whistle and a touch foul. He's got his hand on there, and it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. But it's gonna put Little on the line. You know, it's, when you're averaging 21 and a half points a game, Glenn, you, sometimes you get those calls. Yep, fouls on Leggins. His first, team second. First free throw is up and good. So Darrell Little now with three points in the game. Yeah, little smooth stroke. He does. You can always tell a good free throw shooter. He has the form. Yes, he does. Makes them both. It's a 9-7 lead for Polytech. Cape with the ball under five to go opening quarter. Cape, okay, this is, uh, let's see if they can convert here in the half court. What we've seen them have success with is out in transition. 
Let's, let's see if they can put together some half-court offense. This is where you see Shell yeah. do a lot of damage down in the paint. Or at least he did against Hapo. Yeah. Hapo. Okay, for the basketball. Zimmerman will handle it. He's guarded by Shelton Hoskins. They were looking to get it in to Potemski. Now top of the circle, three-point shot is a little off the mark. Rebound. Fast break, good pass. Oh, on the trailer, but then the tip in is good. And there, that little, right place at the right time. Great look by Gamber, uh, you know, and, and it was a good layup opportunity for Anderson. He wasn't able to do it, but what a follow right there. Um, and by if, Little. Yeah, if you're, you're here, oh, a strong move to the paint, and that's up and in by Potemski. Love it, fake hand off and drive right to the, right to the lane. Now, Potemski got in foul trouble against Apo, so he didn't really get a chance to see his full right. his full arsenal. That was a nice move right there. And like I said, he's been great on the defensive rebound and, and turning that into transition offense. Polytech trying to set up the half-court offense. They have a two-point lead, 3.40 to go in the opening quarter. Dribbling through the circle. Good defense right now by Cape. Yep. Down in the far corner, move baseline to left hander, strong move, and it's up and in. That's Shelton Hoskins. Poly Texas, they got the quickness advantage for sure. They've been able to break down the Cape defenders despite uh, despite the packed in lane there. Yeah. And that's a good finish in traffic as well. Four point lead. Potemski in the high post. Now down on the left corner. Back to Potemski. Turn around, move it. He had the ball stripped away from it. They tried to get it ahead. And Gamer just didn't have time to grab it and get a good look. That's one of those, obviously hindsight 2020. He's come down with that ball, go up. Little mid-range jumper was missed. The putback missed as well. To the free throw line, jump shot up and good. And Little continues his hot streak, Pat. Love it, I love it. He shot that ball in rhythm. Didn't go in there against the defense that was waiting for him. So, all right, you guys want to pull back? I'm more than capable of knocking this shot down, and he does so. He has eight of the Panthers' 15 points here in the first quarter. Continuing to his hot streak this week. 2.20 to go in the opening quarter. Tolson, mid-range jump shot, short. And a rebound goes to the Panthers. They boxed out well that time. Right wing, three-point shot on the way. No good. Ball is tipped, and Cape comes away with it. Three on two. Good pass. Yes, it was. And nice hands up and in. We've got a timeout on the floor by head coach Ray of the Cape Penelope Vikings as Zimmerman gets the bucket down the other end. Pat, yeah. your impressions early on? Uh, it's been fun. Uh, both teams, I think, are playing good. Cape's been able to get out in transition, like we said. That's how they've been able to stay in this one. Polly's been doing a pretty good job in the half court as well. And um, no, I, I've been impressed with both teams. This is fun action so far here. 15-11 with two minutes to go. You know, Glenn, we talked about it again in, in the pregame, but it's, it's worth mentioning how crazy this boys' basketball season has oh. been. You know, we talked about we, we've seen Cape right hovering around that top ten. Now Polytech's in the top ten at number three. It's probably, you know, Middletown, Seaford, they've been up top all season long, but it's been it's been craziness from about three down. Right now you're sitting at Polytech, Howard, Sanford, who's now into the top ten. Salazi Adams, Tower Hill, Apo, Caravelle, who's now in the top ten. And then William Penn rounding it out, but... It's been fun, man. This is going to be the last couple of weeks, a, a fun couple of weeks here to close this one out. It sure is, and we're looking forward to it. And we've got uh, more hoops action coming up for you next week. We're under two minutes to go here. It's open a quarter. Right. Nick Allison Draney and the Upstate crew are going to have Polytech again. Good put back off the miss. No box out on the strong side and the bucket in by Little. Well, Little now has done that a few times and Cape's gonna have to find a way to put a body on him. That's one guy you cannot lose sight of on the defensive side of the floor. Has 10 of the 17 points the Panthers have here in this opening quarter. Double figures already, Pat. Yeah, and, and you know what? It isn't all just generated by, you know, it, he, he's, he's setting himself up. That's a nice look. At the good feed, Potemski scores underneath. Potemski's been good. I mean, he's just a good, solid big man. Glenn, I mean, he knows his role. He plays it well. He's not trying to do too much. I Old think, school. I think it was number 10 here, Tramel, who got that dish. Yeah. And there's a traveling violation. 
against the Panthers. 67 seconds to go here first quarter. We've got a good one here at Polytech. Yes, we do. Brody uh, Seitz coming in. Polytech. Yep, both teams substituting freely early on in the game. It's fast paced, want to keep the legs fresh. Cape has at least three non-starters on the floor right now. I think Shell's getting a breather, and there's a cross-court pass stolen. A lot of speed, coast to coast, and a lay-in up and in by Sheldon Hoskins. Great job by Sheldon Hoskins reading. Potemski's made that cross-court pass twice already in this quarter, and he was able to kind of anticipate that one, get out in transition. He's so quick, and once he got the ball, no one was going to catch him. Little baseline jump shot, that's good, tough angle. That's tough, man. That is a tough shot right there from Zimmerman. Cuts that lead down to four, 19-15. Six points in this quarter for Zimmerman. He and Potemski both with six for Cape. 12 points for Little. And here's Brewington. I mean, he's a guy that, he's the engine starter, right? He's going to set this offense up, make sure guys are in the right position. Gets it off to the, the scorer here. <laughs> the finisher, they like to say. Yep. Whistle, a little contact. I think before the shot, we'll have to wait to see. Yep, on the floor. Yeah. His year, Freeman, yep. going to come in here for the Vikings. Zimmerman picked up the foul, his first, team's third. Yeah, Potemski gets a little breather, so it looks like four non-starters on the floor right now. Skying for that rebound, and we have one quarter in the books. We're going to keep it right here, Pat, with the Panthers on top, 19-15. And yeah. it's been the little show. It has. I mean, we talked about him. Uh, Pre-game's averaging 21.6 a game, already with 12 here in the first quarter. I like that. My mistake, 10. I'll oh, recount. 10 points, 10 they get points. a recount. Um, yeah, that was a good little play to get Brewington an open three there at the buzzer as well, but... I've been impressed with Polytech. You know, they've done a good job in the half court. They've got out in transition. Um, you know, they made some plays on the defensive side of the ball in terms of the half court defense. Uh, but they've kind of lacked a little bit. They've allowed Cape to get out in transition. If there's one thing that Poly would like to work on, that's going to be it. But, you know, Cape right now, you know, they're getting coached up. They've done a decent job. they got to keep an eye on where Little's at right now. They've kind of lost him a few times. He's gotten four points off putbacks. And, uh, you know, half court wise, they, they, let's see if they can continue to work in offense right now and try and limit possessions in this game against a high scoring team in, in Polytech. 24 teams make the playoffs. And these two uh, certainly should be in that mix, in that conversation. I know Polytech's probably in a little better position right now because it looks like they're going to win the North. After Cape, they only have Milford left to play in conference. And they come in here with a conference mark of 12 and 0. Yeah, they got they got quality wins. Look at the defense there. It's just again, yep. good half court D. Great hands, and that was almost a travel. Coach Ray Cape wanted it, but he gets a turnover anyhow on the bad pass. A good move inside and a finish by Sheldon, or excuse me, by Zimmerman. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Zimmerman, like I said, he's such a high IQ player. I really like his game. And he recognized, he didn't panic, took the extra dribble and was able to turn that into a layup. So many guys were trying to take a, a contested floater there. He just took the extra dribble and was able to get himself a nice, easy layup. Nice look. Yeah, great ball movement. That's a good pass from Gamber underneath. I didn't see who got the bucket. I was boxed out. Yeah, that was um, Shelton Hoskins on okay. a good cut. And like you said, great find by Gamber. Legal screen. Yeah, they're going to they're get uh, Freeman there. Glenn, he was moving, trying to get his body on Gamber. That'll be his first team, first foul, fourth team foul. So nobody in foul trouble yet. Six different players with one personal foul in the ball game. Yeah, we're talking about the handle up at conference and potential teams to get in the postseason. You're looking at two here, obviously. Probably throw Dover into the conversation. And then when you go to the handle up in South, Seaford, Laurel. So there's five solid teams right there, and there's another steal in the paint. Nice play. Vikings have done a good job here tightening up the defense. Good kick out in the left corner. Three balls good. Into the game number four. That's Dylan Fannin. Fannin shot that ball with confidence. Love to see it. 
We got ourselves a basketball game here, Glenn. This has been as advertised here. Just at the free throw line, a little short, but another offensive rebound and a put back and going to the line is Gamber. Yeah, They're getting work. a lot of second chance ops. Yeah, they are. Uh, you know, Cape kind of losing guys in, in transition. Obviously, both big fellas on the bench right now, so they're going small with a small lineup. And Gamber was able to just position his body down there to get the offensive board and put back. And right now, they don't have Potemke or Shell in the game. Right. Trammell picked up his first foul. That's the fifth team foul. 6.22 to go in the half. And Gamber completes the three-point play. Such a complete player, Gamber. Yeah, he's grown, too, uh, from what we saw last year. Polytech in his first half, four for four from the charity stripe. Almost had a good give and go there. Right, and down, tough angle shot, but drawing the contact and going to the line will be Zimmerman. Yeah, great job here by Zimmerman. You know, he's, he's, he's been aggressive here offensively, looking to score. Uh, we've seen him play distributor before in particular in that Appaquinimic game. But tonight, he's looking to, he feels like he's got an advantage and he's looking to score for this group right now. He's done a pretty good job. Foul against Sipe, his first, team's third. 24-20 ball game. Second free throw is up and good. Zimmerman cuts it to a one possession game at 23, or 24, 21. With that first step by a lot of these poly players, there's another yeah. offensive rebound. And there's a whistle and a foul on the baseline. They're just relentless. They're relentless on the glass right now. And like you said, the first step has been elite, whether it be Gamber, whether it be Shelton Hoskins, who's extremely quick. First player of the game to pick up two personal fouls is Freeman of Cape. And that's the sixth team foul. So for the rest of the half, Polytech will be in the bonus. At the line, Brett Shelton Hoskins. He has eight points in the game. Make it a perfect five for five from the line here in the first half for Polly. It's too big. You, know, you talked about Glenn um, Middletown when we did the Middletown right. game the other day. That how you know them shooting at a high percentage from the free throw line really helps them, um, you know, win games. And you know, Polly Tech kind of the same way. They're coming out here. They're they're making the free ones, as they like to say, Glenn. And a lot of times, a lot of games come down to that, especially late in the game. Yep. Five-point yes. advantage for Polly. Cape with the ball. Dribbling into the paint. Off the glass and good. And I tell you, he's on fire here. That Zimmerman. He's, he's locked in. And he's playing extremely well right now. He has a quick first step. He can hesitate just a little to throw the defender off and then get in the air quick. Yep. A thousand percent. And as, as this Polly defense starts to adjust to trying to stop him, um, now he'll look to distribute. I mean, yeah. He knows where the open guys are. Traveling violation called. Turnover committed by the Panthers. 5.20 to go in the half. One possession lead for Polytech at 26-23. Cape to throw it in cross court from us. Brewington back in the game for yeah. the Panthers. Saw him come back in, yep. Top of the circle, three-point shot. Ew! Is he feeling it or not, Pat? That's a heat check, and he buried it. You, he could, you can see he's starting to gain the confidence right now. Zimmerman three ties the game. Floater in the lane, no good. This time boxing out. Cape wants to run, but they're going to have to pull it back. Zimmerman, right wing. Good move by Tolson. He gets the bucket in the first lead of the game for Cape. There it is. I mean, that's how they, they've been able to push the tempo. Zimmerman's locked in. The defense has to suck on to him. He looks to go, and he finds Tolson, who's been kind of his co-chair this season. And they look at the defense starting to generate some deflections. Cape's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Look at this. Good block in the lane. Tolson released. Has a defender down there. Left hander's up and good. And all of a sudden, Cape's up by four. And Coach Pierce has to call a timeout. We're going to step aside with him. It's noisy here in this joint. 
as the Cape Hillopen Vikings have a 30 to 26 lead. Back after this on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution. We are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. Your home. Clint Fraser back here with Pat Cariates at Polytech High School where Cape's gone on a little run here. 7-0 run. It was a big three-pointer by Zimmerman to tie the game and then a couple of two-pointers. And here we are, Pat, a lead now for the Vikings. Yeah, and it's it started uh, with Zimmerman. It, this young man, Drew Zimmerman, has come up huge for this group. He's been able to get to the lane, he's been able to get to the foul line, and then he hits a big three to tie the game up at 26 a little bit ago. And the energy level from this group has picked up because of, of Drew's play. They were able to get some defensive rebounds, some defensive stops, and get out in transition, which has been the story for them here in the first half. Their ability to get out, break uh, Polytech down, you know, in transition offense and finish, get finishes at the rim. Tolson, the the most recent recipient of that. That's been their game plan, and they've been they've been doing a great job of it here in this one. I have Zimmerman with 14 points, nearly half of Cape's total. Yeah. And the big guy in the first quarter is back out on the floor for Polytech. Yeah, they couldn't afford to keep him down there for too long. Yeah, he sat out a lot of the early second quarter. Good defense. defense. Mid-range jump shot, too strong and running down the rebound. Who else? Zimmerman. He's playing great. Oh, he faked a pass and the floater goes in, and it's 32-26. Yeah, I, he, is, he is playing with a ton of confidence right now. That is not an easy floater. No. That is not an easy floater. He's just got it all working right now. Little with the ball, the right-hander, he can't get it to go in. He tried to tip it and it wouldn't go in. Zimmerman with it. Wasted no time in attack mode. Kicks it out, left corner, three-point shot is good. Wow. And it is good by Cam Trammell. Tell you, Glenn, these last couple of minutes is the best you know, they've seen Cape play in the, the six quarters that we've seen them play. 35-26, and not, or an 11, yeah, nine-point lead. Do the math, Brace. Good nice bounce look. pass underneath, and they can't make the shot. Wow. They rattled a little bit, and again, out in transition. Left uh -oh. wing, three-pointer, oh. and that's good by Zimmerman. And the house is going nuts. Yeah, when you're in a rhythm like this, there's, it, it, is, it is the most fun you can have playing sports. 38-26. He is, look at it, he is locked in right now. Yeah, oh man, this is great. Brewington trying to break down Zimmerman defensively. <laughs> He's pumped up. Look at this. Ball loose look at on the this. floor. Picked up by Polly. Mid-range jumper on the way. Will not go. Defensive rebound for Cape. Zimmerman had the ball stolen. Free throw, jump shot, and getting the rolling good, and finally breaking that long run is Little. And they needed, Polytech needed that. Polytech needed that. Little knocking that shot down. Now, you know, Zimmerman, he looks like he he was um, you know, hit in the chin on that loose ball there. Um, looks like there's a timeout on the floor. He, he looks to be okay, but I, he was kind of shaken up on that one. And uh, this has been fun, man. Uh -huh. Cape. Cape's energy level has just risen. And it's it's turned into an all-out war here in this game. And it's loud in here. There must be a, a fair amount of Cape Viking fans making the trip up from the Lewis Milton area. Yeah, and you know, and their team's playing. This is great effort. You know, that they're they're not turning the basketball over. Um, the the energy level is just it's extremely this is a tournament level type yeah. uh, energy that we're seeing from this group. Like a win and go home type type feel, and you know there's a chip on their shoulder. Obviously, Cape's kind of been hovering right outside the top ten, at least in our rankings. Right. And Polytech's been getting a lot of press lately, and you know, they've been looked at as as one of the top teams, you know, below the ditch, as they like to say. <laughs> you know, Kent and Sussex County, and I think Cape's out here. They're trying to send a message. They feel like they have an advantage, 
um, in this game that you know they, they deserve to have the kind of respect that Polytech's getting right now, and they're, they're sending a message right now. So and they're doing it with a smaller lineup. They're not using the advantage of Potemski and Shell. Yeah, they're getting out in transition, yeah. Glenn, and I, I, clearly it's been working for them, and you know, Coach Ray's riding hot hands. Hot. Hey, you know what it says. Yeah. It ain't broken. Don't fix it. That's exactly right. And but look, I'm sure, I'm sure Jack and Odin are both going to sit back and be like, oh, hey, if, if, this is, if this is a matchup thing and we're going to win, yeah. I'm all for it, man. Yeah. They both seem like they're good they're good team guys. And they've been pumping up on the bench, that's yep. for sure. Here we go. Cape with the ball, two minutes to go in the first half. Let's see if Polly's got an answer. See if they start to lift their level up a little bit to match right. the Vikings. Three-point shot by Tolson was partially deflected, and we've got a whistle, I think a foul going in the other direction. That's yeah. going to be against Dylan Fannin. So right there, you saw Brewington picked up at half court hard. You got the block, um, great defense and, and block there by Little, and then Brewington fights for the defensive rebound. So, you know, Brewington was down here dribbling the ball. Zimmerman was clapping in his face. Brewington's not a big, it doesn't yeah. seem like he's a big uh, uh, emotion guy. He looks like he's, he's keeping things tight. He's keeping himself mellow. But that last defensive possession shows me that he's like, he's going to try and respond now. Let's see if he can do it. First miss at the line tonight, and that was the front end of a one and one. Yeah, that's Kate big. with a 10 point lead of the ball, 140 to go in the first half. Zimmerman looks for a screen. You have Shell back out on the floor. He just handled the ball in the high post. Nice work. Right wing, three point shot. That's good by number five, Leggins. Good offense. Beautiful pass, beautiful extra pass by Dylan Fannin. Dribbling into the lane with confidence, and then he finds a wide open catch and shoot three for Leggins. Cape has five three-pointers in this second quarter. That's huge. If they're able to hit from the outside, it's really going to help them stand out. Largest lead of the game at 13. There's a whistle. It was on the floor before the shot. Oh, wow. They're, yeah, they're going to call that uh, right there on Trammell. I guess they felt like he had a hold of him. Gamber, good positioning. He, he recognized he had the, the height advantage. Tried to seal him off. Talked to uh, Xavier Brewington. Be like, hey, hey, throw it over the top. And they obliged. Front end of the one and one is good by Gamber. Polly's just got to settle down right now. I mean, this is the counter punch. In a heavyweight fight like this, you're you're gonna you're gonna take a couple blows. You're at the standing eight count right now. You gotta take a deep breath. Second Try and recover, keep this thing close, tighten it up here before the half. This game isn't out of touch yet. No. Eleven point Cape Lee. Zimmerman throws it down the floor. Fannin tried to save it right to a Polytech player. Fast break bucket is up and good, and here's the run. Brewington with a bucket. We're working. You see though they're going with a the press here. I like this. They try and force Cape to take care of some pressure the first time they're seeing it. This is a perfect time to do it right before yep. the half. Lead was 13, it's down Ten to seconds. nine. They're gonna get a timeout by Coach Ray, a smart one. Yes, it was. They needed it. They, they were scrambling a little bit. That's a, it, like I said, a wonderful job uh, here by um, you know Coach Pierce over here calling the press on late in the quarter. You don't want to start, sometimes starting a quarter is a good time for it. You really don't want to do it, I don't think, early early in a game, like midway through the first quarter or midway through the second quarter. You're either going to close a quarter with it or you're going to start a quarter with it. So I like perfect timing for it. Cape got this lead, started playing with some juice. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yeah. We're down to about 46 seconds to go in the half, and Coach Ray's team has a healthy lead. It's nine right now. He wants a good possession here, and he wants to be able to take a good lead into the locker room after that big run they had. Exactly, and now's a good time to set up your offense. Shell, the fan in at the free throw line, kick out, contested three-point shot. Zimmerman's been feeling it, but that one he had a double team on it. I see the loose ball here. I don't know who it went yep. off. I think they went off Leggett's. Yep, one official said tape ball, the other one overruled him. They want to make sure they got the call right. So 35.6 to go in the half, Panther basketball. Let's see what the Panthers decide to do here. Work within their flow of their offense. Me personally, I'd like to see them take the last shot here. Yeah, I think that's what they're looking to do. Brewington has it out near midcourt. Done a good job, you scored four in a row. And he's Trying watching the official. 
Watching the official doing the five smart. second count, smart. yep. Smart. All right, we're down close to 10. Now they start to move, almost a steal. Three point shot is contested and short. Put back is good. Let's do it is again. Five seconds and that was little. Got a delay of game warning here going on Polytech, Glenn. Little with a big bucket there, cuts that Here's, lead to seven. I mean, Glenn, that's his third putback off an offensive rebound here in the first half. That's a good catch there, Pat. Want to reset the clock to 3.2, so Coach Ray setting up the final shot. So, um, Polytech's done a good job to cut a 13-point deficit down to seven here in the last say. minute. Yeah, hey, I mean, they pretty much, they did their job last two minutes, cutting the lead in half. Let's see if they can close it out, not give one back here to Kate. They get it into Zimmerman. At midcourt, just a little off the mark. And what a first half here at Polytech High School as the Panthers trail K41-34. What do you think, Pat? This is, what we, this is what we expected, man. High energy. I'm extremely impressed with what the Vikings did here in this first half. It was a 7-2 early jump for Polytech. And, you know, we were seeing a lot of, of little crashing the offensive boards. But Kate stayed with it. They kept themselves in the game by getting out in transition, and then the onslaught began. And Zimmerman, it was led by Zimmerman. Drew Zimmerman, a heck of a first half for him. This is what you need to do on the road in a, in a conference game if you want to pull an upset off. you got to do a little bit of everything. They've gotten out in transition. They've hit some outside shots. they played great defense. Um, you know, right now the recipe's been working for them, but the Panthers did a good job of countering it and cutting this thing down to seven at the break. How about... Uh, 19 points in the first half for Drew Zimmerman, That's including insane. two threes in that second quarter. Uh, it's the best half of basketball uh, we've seen. I've seen him play now in, in you know the last two seasons. Um, he did it all. Man, he was able to get into the lane. He's playing with such confidence. Like I said, we saw him in Apo kind of play distributor more. Uh, wasn't hitting the outside shot. This game, he came out and he was seeking his offense early. Layups, getting out in transition, hitting mid-range, and then it opened up. You see a couple shots go through, the confidence level raises, and then it extends out to the three-point range where he's been he's been great. On the other side, Polytech Little had 14 points in the first half. He had 10 in the first quarter, and he sat out a lot of the early part of the uh, second quarter of play. Yeah, and right there you're trying to get rotational guys some, some time. Uh, you know, they've relied on him a lot this year from the scoring standpoint. And he sat on the bench. Kate was able to go out on that run. So uh, he did a good job crashing the offensive boards, in particular towards the end of the putback. He's going to have to come out, him and Gamber, as well as Brewington, who's been really quiet scoring-wise in this one. These guys are going to have to come out and, and really ratchet it up here in the third quarter if they want to continue this comeback. All right, we're going to step aside and hear from some of our valuable sponsors here on Delaware Live. But you'll also, during the break, be able to watch our top 10 plays of last week. Halftime score, K41, Polytech 34. Glenn Fraser, Pat Gariantes. We'll be back in a little while. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at PremierPTSP.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. How you doing? My name's Mike Cassidy. I'm the founder and president of Cassidy Painting. I started back in 1984, incorporated in 1986. I never had the word no in my vocabulary. Uh, when someone called me to do a job, I always said yes. Whether it was a struggle, whether it was seven days a week, uh, sun up to sundown, it, it didn't matter. And with that 
philosophy, we were able to grow to the size we are. We employ close to 80 uh, individuals. We really enjoy being in the family business. Um, I look forward to coming to work every day. And it's so nice to work with the people that we work with in the office. Uh, we've really become a family with them. We really create a family experience around here. And Cassidy Painting is a very diversified company. We don't say no to anything. We deal with everything from epoxy floors to painting buildings to uh, spray foam insulation, spray fireproofing. If it deals with a coating, we can handle it. So when our customers call and they're under the gun and they know the need to get a job done, they know who to call because we perform. We've always been performed. We've never been replaced out of 37 years of business. For any of your painting needs, we can handle it. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted. Adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges, BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry, giving our customers the advantages they need right now. Your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service, including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fan wear. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution. Free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now. First State Orthopedic Statewide has 29 physicians at 16 locations. Our physicians and staff provide both non-surgical as well as surgical treatment for almost all orthopedic conditions and injuries. We are specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. For the offense, how about the defense in transition able to get back and use that powerful right hand to send that shot back as well. Then over to number nine, Caravelle and Laurel. What a game it was between the Bucks and the Bulldogs. Ryan Black, deep three, hit, able to knock it through with the contact. A four-point play for Ryan Black there at number nine. Over to number eight, we're going to stay with this one at Caravelle Academy and Joel Parker. He's going to come up with the steal in transition, throws it down with the right hand. Joel Parker, one of a few plays from this game for the Bulldogs. Then over to number seven, this one from the SL24 over the weekend. GG Banks putting on a passing clinic. No look underneath on the feed for two. Then how about another one? Finds an open teammate underneath for the easy lay-in. GG Banks creating some points for her team. Over to number six, back to Caravelle Academy. A name to keep an eye on, Dontarius Jones. He's been spectacular all season. How about this one on the baseline? Hangs and able to finish the reverse layup as the third quarter buzzer sounds. Then over to Howard School of Technology, back there for number five in the Wildcats. The anticipation from Xavier Richards, pal, picks his pocket on the pass and able to take it the other way. And the two-handed flush for Richards, pal. On to number four, the young fellow R.J. Johnson. Very impressed with him against William Penn when we did that game. Here he is at the SL24. He's showing off the anticipation. The steal at half court takes it all the way and going to throw it down emphatically with the left hand. 
Sticking with Sally's and Anthony Smith here at number three. Sal's in Tower Hill. This one from Salesian of Anthony Smith. The crossover in the deep tray ball. A big one for number 24 in white and Salesian. Over to number two, you know this name, Dean Shepard from Tower Hill. More action from the SL24. Gets to half court. Jump shot. Got it to go. Dean Shepard, the jumper from half court at the Chase Fieldhouse at number two. Then at number one, Elijah Proctor Moore and Justin Hines. Some alley oops here. Check out Proctor Moore here first on the inbound. Comes clean down the lane. Throws it down. Catches it and throws it down with the right hand. And then here as well, the SL24. Justin Hines able to cock it back a little bit on that catch and flush. Justin Hines and Elijah Proctor Moore with your top plays this week. We are back here, just about ready to start the second half of action. Glenn Fraser alongside Nick Halliday working the camera. And to my right, it's the mass singer, Pat Gariante. <laughs> That's right, Glenn. You know, I've, I'm known around the apartment complex <laughs> as the hallway singer. I'm known in the office as the office singer. So, I, you know, I'll wear that proudly. Here's our scoring in the first half. Zimmerman leads everybody with 19 points. Tolson has five for Kate. Leggins has five. Fannin and Trammell both made a three-pointer, and Potensky has six. He got all those in the first quarter. Leading the way for Polytech, Darrell Little has 14, 10 points from Shelton Hoskins. Gamber has eight, and Brewington has two. That's your scoring in the first half. Yeah, I mean, a, a heck of a performance from Zimmerman. Uh, you know, he really kind of carried the Vikings in that. You know, Polytech kind of got off to a good start. Drew just kind of took that game. He just took that half over, Glenn. Yeah. And then his teammates started to rally behind him. It, like, lifted their energy level up. It's about as good of a half as you're going to play, um, you know, from this Viking group. That's why they got a seven-point lead. Now it was much higher. They kind of let Polly. Polly kind of answered them a little bit. Now they get to start the second half with the basketball. So let's see if they can continue that energy level up right now and if Polly decides that, that they're going to be able to match it. Let me tell you how close these teams have been during the season. This is the average team score. Polytech, 67 to 55. There's a three-point shot. No good, Look but they get the put back. And there he is again. Little. Four offensive rebounds for eight points. And Polly gets a steal, but Kate gets it right back. Tolson with the ball. Four on two. Tolson all the way, yeah. the under oop, and it's good. Great work by Tyrone. I'll tell you what, Gates found a formula here against his Polytech defense. They, they're not doing a good job in transition defensively. This game action is too fast. Wow. I'll give you the rest of those stats. There, now we got a foul and a stoppage. And going to the free throw line will be Brewington. Brett Shelton Hoskin. That's Brewington. Oh, no, Brewington. Yep. Okay, yep. I saw him helping him up. So Brew at the line, and the foul goes against Shell. That's his first team's first in this half. So anyhow, I was telling you, th the average score on the season for Polytech is a 67 to 55 game. For Kate, it's a 65 to 54 game. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's defensively, Kate's done a great job holding opponents down. Eight games, they've held their opponent under 50 points. Second free throw is good. Brewington makes them both. Well, we're on pace both ends. We're on pace for uh, high on both averages. Yeah. Offensive efficiency in the first yes. half for sure. Little penetration. The shot's deflected. He got it back. But then Polytech comes up with a miss. Not a bad look. They got to get back. Good job in transition. Yeah, Amp's here. good move. Uh -oh. Amp wants the ball. He's going to take a deep three-point shot. It's nothing but net. Lost it. They did a great job, and then you ran away from him. Left it wide open for a three. You can't leave Gamber. You can't leave Little wide open for shots like that. And there's almost a steal, yeah. Pat. Down in the right corner, three-point shot. That rimmed out. Panthers uh -oh. with the ball. It's a two-on-one. Step back three. This one short, rebound to Shell. Game has changed, Glenn. Turned down a layup to shoot the open three in transition. Oh, Got wow. Got bumped, can't get the shot to go. Great, hey, that's just a wonderful job again in transition here by Kate. Off the long miss, Zimmerman knew what he needed to do. He got into his defender, felt the contact, went right up with it. This is playing a heck of a game, man. Yep. Heck of a game so far. Well, that's a missed opportunity. He had a two on one, Little and Gamber. And instead of attacking the basket, you take you take a three. I mean, 
<laughs> you know, it looks great <laughs> if you make it, but in terms of percentages, you're yeah. on a run right now. Yeah. And you're only down by two points. Go tie it up. First free throw is good by Zimmerman. He now has 20 points, make it 21 for the game. Working. Look at this. Quick down pass. the floor. Shot was altered. And Zimmerman comes away with a loose ball. It's a two-on-one. Passes it off. Tolson uses his body in a great fashion and drew the foul. Must have been the body because Brewington got up and he, he swatted all ball, but he looked like he got a little bit with the body there, and that's what the call is. I'll tell you what I appreciate about Xavier Brewington is, again, nothing seems to phase him, man. I mean, there's been a few things that I think could, that's his third foul. And that's something to keep an eye on for sure, Glenn, but nothing seems to phase him, man. He doesn't look like he's, he's able to be rattled. That first free throw is no good. But like you said, I mean, three fouls. I see yeah. if they keep him in, and I see that how that adjusts his aggressiveness defensively. Looks like they're, they're going to trust him. Tolson missed them both. That's rare. Tolson's a pretty good free throw shooter. Early in the third quarter, deep right corner three, hit the side of the rim, but it bounces all the way out to Polytech. Oh, well. And now he looked like he turned that over. No call. Travel. And there's a travel, so they might have missed one, but they didn't miss that one, according to Coach Steve Ray, who's right to our left. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, things kind of balance themselves out right there. You know, Glenn, <laughs> you miss one, but then you get it right back. Having trouble getting the ball in, and we got a five-second count. And Zimmerman yelling to his teammates, look, you got to get spacing. you got to get off your man. Gotta, you got to gotta try and you know, set screens for each other, do something there. Cape had a seven-point lead at half. We're early in the third quarter. It's a four-point ball game. What a game. Both teams playing at a really high level right now. Brewington stays on the floor with those three fouls. He takes a deep three, gets it. That's a big hit. Yeah, he hasn't done much on the scoring sheet yet tonight. But that's a big-time three. They got a... That's a delay of game on Polytech. That's their second delay of game, which is gonna end up being a technical foul and two free throws here for Poly. That's the second delay of game warning we've seen Polytech get. Yep. So two big threes early in the third quarter by the Panthers, one by Gamber and now one by Brewington and it's a one point game. Well, those are gonna be the things there. Is like, guys, hey, leave the ball alone when it goes through the hoop. Yeah can't afford to be giving these guys any more points. So at the free throw line is Zimmerman hey, for Cape. Why not? I mean, it's been his night tonight. He's yeah. having it his way like he's at Burger King. <laughs> he's three for four <laughs> from the line, make it four for five. <laughs> 22 points in the game for Zimmerman. Hey, this, is, this has been impressive for him as he misses the second one, but I mean, this has been extremely impressive. It's a two-point lead for Cape and the ball. Zimmerman will throw it in backcourt. Tolson, he's picked up by Brewington. Brewington on the floor with three personal yeah, fouls. And he's smart. He's going to back off. Yeah. Pass underneath. They were trying to find, I think that was Shell. Yeah. They looked for Shell a little bit too long, but they're going to get little on the foul here. That's his first. They waste no time. Cape throwing this thing right in. Yeah. That's the team's fourth. I'm going right at Brewington here. I mean, I, I'm clearing out and letting go. He's got three fouls. Shell trying to post his man up, and he's uh, fouled again. Uh, nope, they no, traveled that time. Uh, no, trying to balance. back his fender. Yeah, Little kind of pulled the, the chair out from underneath him there. Got caught off balance. But if I'm Cape, I'm attacking, I'm attacking number zero. He's got three fouls. Well, they're trying to keep him in the high post and guarding the ball and keeping away from the basket defensively. Good spin move. Pass to the baseline. Nice. Now left wing, three-point shot. That's good. That's good offense right there, Glenn. Polly nice gets the lead play. back. Now it allows them to set up their pressure defense. Was that number 12? It was. Sometimes I just get blocked out by the official posting. Oh, yeah, it's just, it was a heck of a shot there as Anderson knocking it down. 
And how about this? It's a 13 point lead. It's been erased. Yeah. Underneath, the shot won't go. Fannin with a rebound. Baseline, and we've got a whistle on a foul on the baseline. And that'll be team foul number five against Poly Tech. We still have 4.30 to go in the third quarter. It's been, uh, it's been a foul, and then you got the technical on top of it, and they call that on Brillington? That's his fourth. That's his fourth foul. That's huge. And that's the downside, right? Because, you know, you want to play aggressive. You want to get down in the paint, get in the mix for rebounds. But plays like that break down, next thing you know, you're reaching in at the wrong time, and you're picking up your fourth foul. Fannin at the line makes the first. That ties the game at 47. Fannin with the second attempt. Both coaches getting subs in. Second free throw, no good. Battle, Fannin gets nice it back. Work. It's a three-point possession. Say, well, all effort right there. Good work by Fannin. Getting in there and finishing at the rim. Off the zone, miss. You young guys watching the game, that's a way to follow your free throw. Good fundamental basketball. Step back, jump shot. Off the mark by Little. Rebound, Tulsa. Coach, Coach Ray wants to push the pace, yeah. Pat. It worked for him in the first half. Ah, a little out of control. What a save, though. Tolson with a deep three. Hits the front of the rim. Fan and tried to get it. Look at this. Now Little and a reach-in foul by Zimmerman, probably wisely. It's a good foul. Good foul by Zimmerman. They, they don't get clear path in high school. It <laughs> wouldn't have been anyway. But stop that stop that fast break. I mean, Little is, a, is an elite finisher at the rim. Don't allow him to get down there. Foul was almost at mid-court, so there's no way he's shooting free throws. No, he's not shooting free throws. Yeah. Only the second team foul committed by Cape. And that's the second on Zimmerman. Okay, so they look, Amber and Little are going to have to step up. I mean, Brewing, they're going to have to create their own yeah. shot with Brewington on the bench. Brewington's been controlling from the point the half-court yes. set, so now it looks like it's Gamber. He's more than capable. I mean, he did that a lot for them last year. Gamer trying to break down the defense. Spin move. Has the ball tipped away and it's stolen Zimmerman. by Zimmerman. It's a three on one. Nice. Passes off, and they make the bucket. That's a good, smart play. He's just so headsy, man. He's just, I, I love his game. He's always in control. Leggins got the bucket. It's a four point Cape lead. Three point Ooh, shot wow. by Gamer, and there's the answer. You go under the screen. And he takes advantage of you, Glenn. Stepped up, rose up with confidence to knock that one down. It's a one-point game. Cape with the ball up 51 to 50. 3.05 to go third quarter. Good pass inside to Shell. High off the glass, won't go. We've got a whistle on the floor. Foul's gonna go the other way against Cape. Let's see, they get this one in. And the big fella Potemski's gonna re-enter re here. Yeah, Potemski had six points in the first quarter. Really didn't see any floor action in the second quarter. Yeah, he's going to come in for Shell. Shell's kind of struggled here. He talked about how great a touch he had in that Apo game. It yeah. hasn't been here tonight. But <laughs> for him, teammate Zimmerman has stepped up. 2.50 to go. Deep left corner three ball hit the top of the backboard. That's a tough one. Rebound a little, he gets the putback. I don't know how many offensive rebounds he's had. Pat says five. Five, and he's converted all of them for 10 points. It's impressive what he's done. Now the Panthers lead, 52-51. Zimmerman drives the baseline, reverse layoff is good. This kid is out of control right now. He's playing possessed, Glenn. Now it's a one-point lead for Cape, as back and forth we go. What a game. Good no-look pass underneath. But the presence of Potemski altered the shot. Look at this. Look at two, Zimmerman. Two on one. Zimmerman dishes it off. There's another bucket. And he found Leggins again. Oh, man. He's in, he's in some kind of a rhythm right now. Under two minutes to go in the third. Three-point lead for the Vikings. You can probably hear Coach Ray barking out signals. Nice right find. corner, three-point shot is short. Holly's off from deep. Yeah, I like to see them work the ball into Little on the post, let him raise up. I like to see Gamber try and get in, in the rhythm and look to attack, play some two-man game. You haven't seen that from them yet. 
Brody's site being guarded by Potemski. He came in for Brewington, who is on the bench now with four fouls. There Strong move, and he gets the roll. That's it, they need that. And Little and Gamber have got to, they, they've got to take over right now on the scoring load with how great Capes has been playing offensively and how, how quick they've been out to get out and transition. 20 points now for Little for Polly. Gamber had eight at the half. He's hit two three-pointers this quarter, so give him 14. And Zimmerman, who had 19 at half, has made five, so give him 24. Those three top scorers in the game. Yeah, I mean, and, and it, 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 Zimmerman, again, it, you're used to seeing him facilitate. Him going off in this way has been quite quite the, the treat for us here tonight. And, you know, Gamber and, um, and Little have done this all season long. Er, you know, yeah. little, little one point right now off of his average and uh, Gamber at about three points off his average. So they're going to exceed their averages as well. I mean, this has been a high-quality basketball game here today. All right. Pat and I had a chance to uh, take a breather here. Capes with the ball, 140 to go here in this third quarter. You're going to have to take your loses <laughs> here to ice the throat down <laughs> after this game. The vocal cords are going to be stretched. Jump shot. Good. Zimmerman with a hot hand. Yeah, you're not. He is, man. This is quite, what a rhythm. Three-point lead again for Cape. Let's see if Polly has the answer. Little with the ball. Dribbles to the free nice. throw line. Dishes off nicely underneath. Oh, but the ball wouldn't go down. Unreal. It was down and came out. Unbelievable that that did not go in. Zimmerman, strong. Has a shot blocked. There's Little on the block. 60 seconds to go, third quarter. Feel the way he's missed as if he gets a shot blocked. Gamber, guarded by Zimmerman, pulls it out. Looks like Coach Pierce wants him to work a little clock here. Why not? Limit the possessions. Get to the fourth quarter. Now he starts to move and pulls it back out. I think Coach Pierce wants him to hold for the final. Let's see. It's a lot of clock to work. Oh, oh there's a steal. We're patient enough. <laughs> it was a low pass off the foot, or at least down low. Yes. Where number 15, Sype could not get it. Yeah, Potemski, just, he, he's defended it perfectly. You can't force the issue like that. Double team. Oh, nice, nice speed underneath. Bannon was wide open. Telling you, man. Bannon got to give a little love to Zimmerman. He's oh. fed him on about three buckets. Zimmerman got the ball on a string, and he's been hitting shots, so he gets it. He drags a double team towards him because they're like, he's going to hit this. Yeah. And he finds the open man. Like I said, he always makes the right basketball play. Been moving the lane, wouldn't go, two, one, battle underneath, and that's it. Three wow. quarters in the books. It was a seven point lead at half for Kate. Polly cut it down to five. Boy, what a fourth quarter is coming up. Let's keep it right here. Yeah, Glenn, you're yeah, right. I mean, this is gonna be quite the fourth quarter. Both teams have kind of figured each other out. You've seen the energy level raise up from both teams. Obviously a little foul trouble on Polly Tech side with Brewington, one of the, uh, the key three for them. Being in foul trouble with four. Uh, Cape, it's been the, it's been the, the Drew Zimmerman show tonight. I mean, yeah, my Lord, 26 points. He's got to be close to five assists, if oh, not yeah. more than that. Um, and the rest of that team is, is locking in defensively. They've done a good job. This Polytech team has got some power in terms of offense. Uh, and you're holding them right now to 54 going into the fourth quarter. That's a pretty good job defensively. But this is going to be a fun fourth quarter, Glenn. I'm looking forward to it. There was a lot of noise on the internet the last couple of days about a basketball game, a high school game in Oklahoma, ah. where the final score was four to two. You know this is the kind of game we like, folks. You, and you know how you can make every single game like this? Shot clock. You put a shot clock in. Uh, yeah, I'm a big advocate of it, Glenn. I, I have been the last few years. I, you know, there's there's a couple common. Yeah, I know I can't think of another word, but excuses <laughs> yeah. um, that are that are commonly used as to why uh, this has not been adopted. But it's just gonna it's gonna allow this game, the games, to be even more enjoyable. It's gonna force the kids also to really work on their skills and learn the offense. Well, so far in this game tonight, we would not have needed a shot clock. No, <laughs> no. This is how every game would be. Yeah, it would be free flowing like this. 
Most of what I've witnessed so far downstate in the Hand Open Conference have been these kind of ball games, up you're, and down the floor. You're exactly right. Now, the unfortunate thing is you come upstate and everyone slows things down for the most part. They think that that's their advantage. Yep, the downstate teams have to learn to play against that. Zimmerman guarded tightly, tries to pass underneath. Strong move by Ted Potemski, draws the foul. He'll go to the line. Uh, it's been limited minutes tonight, but Potemski's been good, Glenn. And he's given them you know, the, the yin in terms of the inside game to the Yang that's been Zimmerman and Colson and company from the perimeter. He's been extremely efficient down low, getting himself to the free throw line again. Second foul against Brody Sipes. First free throw is good. And now the team foul number six for the remainder of the game. Kate will be in the bonus. That's huge, Glenn. That's huge because it'll allow them to continue to stay aggressive and they can get themselves uh, to the free throw line. He makes them both. It's a seven-point lead again. That's what it was at half for Kate. 7.35 to go in this one. Let's see what Polly comes with here. Strong move. And drawing the contact. I think it's probably going to be on Potemski. It will send Little to the line. I like what Little did there. He put his nose down and he went to the rim. Polly or Kate's going to have to stop that. They're going to have to slide in on the help defense. But if I'm Little... I, I'm continuing to do it. You got you to try and, and lead your team here. They're going to say it was on the floor, but there's a nice feed off of the pass to Little who gets the little floater in the lane. He's, this is smart. If, 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 I mean, Polytech, they need somebody to step up, and Little's more than capable with his finishing ability to be that guy. Fannin takes the shot, contested. It was tipped, I think, but they're going to say Polytech basketball. That was right in front of us, and it looked like the shot was altered. Yeah, I don't love it. I, don't, I mean, I don't love the shot selection. Yeah, it was highly contested. And it's just early in the possession. Make the defense work a little bit. Seven minutes to go in this one. It's been entertaining, to say the least. Polytech with the ball down five. Gamber thought about a deep three. Just inside the arc. Takes the shot and makes it. That's an impressive shot. I mean, that good defense there by Cape. And, and Gamber rose up with the, the two point, the, the deep two. And it was a good it. feed, but the shot wouldn't go. And now we're going to have a reach in foul over the back. We got leggings there, Glenn. And the Cape, they don't waste any, they don't waste any time coming down the court. That's a good look. So I'm able to finish. If that's leggings, that his third. Yes, they just posted it. And the team's fifth. So once again, Cape is in the bonus for the final 634. But the yeah. next foul by Cape's going to put Polytech in the bonus. Yeah, the next foul. Yeah, it'll be there. Uh, they got the one more foul to get yep. here. Under six and a half to go. Brewington back on the floor with four fouls. Step back, jump shot just inside the arc. It rims out, and the rebound goes right to Potemski. Uh, if I'm Cape, I'm attacking him right away. I am looking to attack him. Tolson kicks it out. Three-point shot is good. By Cam Trammell. Nice hit from Trammell. There's so much confidence by these role players from Cape tonight. That's his second of the game. Give him six points. And now he got a whistle down the other end of the floor. Tolson. We get Tolson here, it looks like. Supposed to be the second on Tolson. And now both teams are in the bonus for the rest of the game. 6.03 to go. 64-58. Vikings on top. They've led since the mid part of the second quarter. See what Little can do. And his help defense has got to be ready. Little's going to look to go to the rim. I correct myself. We had a uh, back and forth, back and forth in the third quarter. And Polly had a couple of one point leads in the third. Go, Good hands over there. Yeah, hey, look at that turnover right there, Glenn. No one touched that ball. It was just a, a miscommunication on the pass. And Cape gets it back. Tramel brings it across midcourt for Cape. He's guarded by Brewington. Now Tolson right in front of us. Cross court to Zimmerman. Had the ball stripped away at the free throw line. And we're gonna go one and one now. He's got him on the hand check, but Zimmerman's feet are always moving. I mean, right there, Glenn, he's able to get by his defender because his feet were constantly moving. When he caught the ball, he was already in motion to where he was trying to go while the defender was trying to rotate still. I mean, it's, the footwork is impeccable. 
Zimmerman missed the front end. Quickly down the other end, spin move, and then losing the handle, but they've got a reach in call. That'll be one-on-one -on -one there. I, uh, I like Potemski's positioning now. Again, Little's looking to force the issue, and he was ready to step right in there to draw the charge, but the reach in occurred right before it. Third foul on Tolson, and that sends Thoreau Little to the line. He's two for two tonight. He missed the front end, but Gamber got the rebound, put back his short, still on the floor. Now a left corner three-point shot. That is short, and Polly still comes away with it. Yeah, well, Polly's been eating on the offensive glass. Great pass down to Little underneath. Third, fourth opportunity there for Polly Tech in a much-needed bucket to see if they can get a stop. Five minutes to go, 64-60, Cape by two. Colson slows it down. And they've got Brewington over on the wing now. Zimmerman looking inside. Potemski quickly kicks it out to Trammell. Back to Potemski. Tries to back down the defender. Yeah, I love it. Where's Brewington? That's who I'm looking to yeah. attack. Tolson had a little contact. Oh, that shot went down the round and came out. Good hustle. Good hustle by Fannin. And then all the way inside is Zimmerman. What a game. He's up to 30 yet, 28. Well, next break, I'll let you know. There's a whistle and a foul. Galen Anderson will go to the free throw line. Heck of a job there by Polly to, to get back out and transition, get themselves to the free throw line. Quick possessions when you're down, you, you kind of need them. If you can get, you got to get points off of them, but you want to try and speed this game up. Foul's on uh, Dylan Fannin. That's his third. So at the line, Anderson has not shot an attempt tonight. He makes it. Give him four points. Twenty-four points now for Little. I, I think we have Zimmerman for twenty-eight. That's that about right, man. Wow, twenty-eight points. Second free throw, no good, but it's off of the Vikings. Polly is right in this thing. Yes, I mean, they are. right there, Glenn. But you never get the feeling that they're out of it. No. It's only a two-possession deficit for them. Little trying to break down the defender, gets it down in the corner. Good defense by Tolson. Just cut him off at the point of attack. They swing it around. Left wing three ball, and that's good by number one, Shelton Hoskins. That's a big hit from Shelton Hoskins. He needed that. Trying to continue to put pressure on Cape and just wait Six. for your opportunity. Yep. Oh, almost a steal. <laughs> Fannin at the free throw line. Oh, he slipped on it. Looked like a wet floor. And they call jump ball here. There's possession. Coach Ray now having a discussion with one of the officials. He wanted a timeout. And he looked like he got it a little too late. That ball was loose by the time he was calling it. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like, you know, I think it was Fannin who slipped on a spot on the floor, but there's yeah. there's someone out there mopping it, so maybe it's just he just lost his footing on the normal floor. Potemski gets a breather. Trammell back in the game. Under four to go in this one. Two-point lead for Kate. Polly with the ball. Brewington, Shelton Hoskins. Back to Brewington. Looking to run some. They're going to look for Gamber here. Gamber oh, wow. takes a step back, three, front of the rim, and Skyen for the rebound was Fannin. He's, he's capable, that's within his range. Yeah. He's unable to knock that one down. Zimmerman, good, no look pass inside, and he found his teammate on the wing, breaking to the bucket, Leggins. Floor general, I mean, he's been so good in transition. He's made every decision correctly, whether he's taken it himself or he's looked for the teammate. On the other end, Little, Euro step, can't get the bounce. Gamber with a rebound, and one. And he can make it a one-point game. Nice work. Hey, hey, Gamber it's, it's primarily been out here on the perimeter, but I like it. I mean, you're late in the game. You're trailing. You got to do everything you can. He's got the size. He gets himself down in the paint and a tough finish through contact. And the foul's going to be the fourth on Trey Leggins. So he becomes the first player in serious foul trouble for Cape. Brewington has four, and he's on the floor for Polytech. Now they're going to go Potemski and Shell coming in. Yep. Going a big, big lineup here, Glenn. 
One free throw coming here for Gamber. 3.15 to go. Shot on the way, it's good. One point game. How fun is this, Glenn? Hold up, hold in there, buddy. <laughs> We're coming in for a landing here these last three minutes. All right, here we go. Tolson walks it across midcourt with three minutes to go in the game. Potemski swings it over on the right wing. Zimmerman had the ball wow. stripped by Shelton Hoskins. He's been good. I mean, he's been the unsung, you know, fourth guy here tonight. Polly can take their first lead since midway of the third quarter. Uh -oh. Right wing three ball. Oh, downtown and came out. They get out. They can get out and transition here. Yep. Shell. He'll pull it back. Had nobody to Smart. pass to. And a good timeout. Coach Ray with a timeout. We're going to keep it right here with a one-point game. I'm going to try to tally up some points here, Pat, while you discuss this great action. Oh, it's been it's been fun. You know, how about this? Polytech able to claw their way back in this one. They've kept themselves within striking distance. And right now, let's see what the adjustment is here from uh, from um, Coach Ray uh, here from, from Cape Henlow. But obviously, he's got the bigger lineup in the game right now. Did they start trying to utilize the post a little bit? Not sure. Obviously, he's got two guys that can finish around the rim. Right there, it was a great job by Shell. You saw Brewington setting up to take the charge right there. And he was able to slow it down, pull it back out. This is a great timeout for this point in the game. You want to make sure you get you get a bucket here. Put the pressure back on Polytech uh, to try and get a bucket here. Now only down by one point. This has been a fun game. Wow. Man, both of these teams have played pretty well and, and taken advantage of opportunities when they presented themselves. 28 points, game high for Zimmerman. And here's balance scoring from the big three for Polytech. But it's not Brewington tonight. Sheldon Hoskins has 13, Gamber has 19, and Darrell Little has 24. Yeah. And here we go, fasten your seatbelts. 2.32 to go, win a one-point game. The Cape can't afford to take the foot off the gas pedal. Not that I expect them to. You gotta keep running your offense here. Looking underneath, he finds Shell. Shell all the way in the paint to Zimmerman had his shot partially deflected and they're going to give the ball. Now we're going to be overruled again, I think. That's all right. He had the angle. Yep. I think it's going to be Kate Ball. I think, they, I think they changed it. Well, I think this outright outside ref wanted to change it. It looked like Shell had, yeah. a, had a hand on it. and Someone knocked it away yeah. from him. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Zimmerman got himself into there, just didn't have the right English on the ball. It's going to stay here with Cape, I think. Now we're going to have the other two officials uh, talk about it. Our officiating crew in the game tonight, Maurice Parker, Terrell Farrell, and Amos Alston. And they are going to change it and give possession to Cape. They've been solid. Shell right. underneath. But he's triple teamed and has the ball stripped. He held it too long. Two on one. It's Gamber. And oh, he wow. gets it in one. Two consecutive two and ones for Gamber. Nice work by Gamber. Good finish. He, he kept the foot on the gas pedal and went strong with it. Shell hesitated just a little bit down here. And Polytech, like you said, triple team. They just they just ambushed him. And then Gamber with a heck of a finish on the other end. And he just got that basket to go down. Two-point lead now for Polytech. And a timeout is right. called. Substitution looks like here. Well, I think Coach Pierce is calling for a timeout. Yeah, there it is. and he's going to get it. Let's see if it's a full or a 30. It's a, it's a full. full. Well, we're going to step aside, Pat, hear from our, our fine sponsors. We'll be right back. Great finish coming up. Serve as team physician and orthopedic consultant for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. Our doctors are readily available to the local emergency departments, as well as medical aid units and urgent care centers for consultation and treatment. Call for an appointment today or visit us at firststateortho.com. Now Gamber with 22 and Little with 24.
Fasten your seat belts, put your tray tables up as we're coming in for a landing here at Polytech High. It's 70 to 68. The home team Panthers on top. Cape with the ball, 2.15 to go, Pat. This, is, this has been everything that, that we've expected. Um, as we said, Cape, Cape's been one of those teams just outside the top 10. They might be playing themselves into the consideration even further here tonight. And then Polytech has been on a run all year. Bannon with a strong shot, but it was errant. And the rebound to Brewington. Under two minutes to go. Polly can make it a two possession lead. Let's see. Now, this is smart here from Polly. Brewington, again, he's not, he's not phased. He's going to get his guy set up. Uh, he's close there. He almost yeah. Ran. Tolson uh -oh. hit the deck. Here's a wide oh. open three, and that's good by Shelton Hoskins. That's huge. He's been so big, Glenn. That's how he leases his fourth three, fifth three of the game. He's made two in the fourth quarter. And that's, that's a five-point lead. That was huge because now Cape really needs points on this possession. Yes, they do. Zimmerman tried to get a screen. They're really helping on him. Tolson into the paint. Back out to Zimmerman. Got his man up in the air. Takes a mid-range jumper on the baseline, and that goes down on a timeout for Coach Ray. Great job by Zimmerman. He read his defender. He threw the pump fake at him. He jumped, went around him, saw that the defender underneath was going to set a charge, and he pulled up and knocked down the mid-range jump shot. Not too many guys have that in their arsenal at this level. They either go all the way to the rim or they shoot the contested three. That's just, again, he's got so much in his bag, man. It, it's really it's really fun to watch. 30 points for him now. It's a one-point or, or a three-point lead for the Panthers. One possession game with 69 seconds to go. Now, if you're Coach Pierce, the veteran coach for Polytech, you probably want to hold the ball as long as you can. If you get a real good look underneath, then fine. But if not, you want to force Cape to foul you. You do. I mean, because here's the thing. You're, you're in a double bonus right now, Glenn. So you're getting two shots no matter what. Yeah, you want to get the motion of the offense going. And, you know, if, if you start to see Cape really go after it and get aggressive, you got to be on the same page with back doors because that's where you can get yourself the open layup. They're going to be susceptible to that if they come out here trying to get all the steals. So right now the – Number one is you gotta break the pressure. Right. You're gonna get pressure here, and then you're gonna you want to try it, depending on if it's a zone or a man-to-man. -man, dribble up, clear out if it's man-to-man, -man, set your, your press break up if it's a zone, and then once you get in the half court, continue to work, like you said, work some clock and take care of the basketball. Don't need turnovers right now. Tramel just came over to the scores table and he will check in. So here we go. Little throws it into Gammer, draws a double team right back to Little. And Little breaks the press. Pull it, pull it back out now. Smart. Yep. Smart basketball. Gammer with the ball. He's made six consecutive free throws. Baseline. Pass. Smart. Yep, they just keep away. This is, good. this is smart. They got to foul somebody. Double team. They're not going to foul yet. 45 seconds to go. Coach Ray hoping they can get a steal. And this is the benefit of having five guys on the floor. He can dribble, Glenn. There's there a foul. Is. Little commits it on Brewington. He will go to the line. Five guys that can dribble the basketball and occupy space, recognize where openings are, and are confident dribbling it. Wonderful job there by Polly. They work off about 32 seconds of, of clock and still get the two shots. And I got to be honest with you, heck of a job by Brewington to not foul out of this game so far. I think that foul was the fifth yeah, on Leggins, so he will foul out. Now he shouldn't be allowed to shoot this. With 11 points. Technically, the game should have been stopped there. That free throw should not have been allowed to. Yeah, have now the officials are going to get together. It was a make. I mean, and it's, I mean, it is a two-shot foul, but right. they should have never given him the ball. Right. Well, I think one official had his back to what was happening over here in front of us. Now let's see what they do. And it's not going to affect the game either way. And it's not Cape's fault that the guy right, well, they right, had to right. substitute here. They're going to count it. Yeah. I mean, but now, I mean, now we've got a whistle and a call at the uh, scorer's table. What They want to know what's going on. All right. So let's reset here. Polly in the double bonus. Cape in the bonus. 37.6 to go. This free throw can make it a five-point lead. No, it stays at four. Cape's got to hurry here. Got to get a quick one. 
30 seconds. Zimmerman all the way in, has his shot rejected. Great defense. They get the rebound. Now Zimmerman takes a right wing, three point shot, it's short. Long rebound to Polytech. Two possession lead, Gamber with the ball. Good work here by Polly. And finally they foul. What a job. It'll be Sheldon Hoskins going to the line. What patience by Polytech. They had the doors blown off of them pretty much in the second quarter. Yeah. It was a close third quarter, but Cape still had a good lead coming five, into the fourth five quarter. Five-point lead. Yes. Yeah. Five-point lead coming into the fourth. And it is kind of reminiscent to this the Caravelle Laurel game that we did last yes. week. Yes. Where you know Laurel led that game for 30 or 32 minutes, and then at the end, Caravelle out executed them. First free throw, no good. We got to make a free throws here. This one's the most important one because it'll make it a true two-possession game because a three ball right, and a foul, and a foul. Can technically still tied us. You're right. Trammell up off the bench. He'll come in for Cape. Second free throw is good. So he makes one of two. 75-70. 13 seconds to no, go. No fouls if you're Polly. Yeah. No fouls. They just, you want them to just basically let him go un, unimpeded down the floor. I mean, it's good to show faux pressure. But Zimmerman picks up foul. a double team. To Fannin, cross court. Tulsa takes a left wing three. Oh, it was around and came out. But that's there's a one. shot, a bucket by Potemski, and he'll go to the line. Yeah, that's an and one. We're not quite done yet. The question is, does Potemski miss? Hope for the tip out for the three, or does he make yeah. it? And then you hope for the steal. Ten points now for Potemski. Makes it 75. Oh, he did the miss! <laughs> and it's a violation. He went for the miss. And I'll yeah. tell you what, it wasn't the worst miss in the world because yeah. they could have got it if they had a guy here. All right, one possession lead, 3.4 to go. Now we've got a timeout by this official. You need a steal and a three here for Kate. There's plenty of time to do that. If I'm Polly, I'm throwing this thing deep. It's Gamber. He's fouled immediately by Trammell. Gamble has made six consecutive free throws here in the second half. Not much time came off the clock. Three seconds. What a job here by Polly. I mean, aside, I mean, aside from the blunder here, fouling at the yeah. rim. But heck of a job in the fourth quarter. It's executing. I mean, they just executed. And they did a good job on Zimmerman. You saw extra bodies being yeah. thrown at him. After he really dominated this game through three. Really did. First free throws good by Gamber. Big make. And He's over 20 points in the game. He and uh, Little both. Second one up and good. There's the true capper right there. What a win. What a win for Polly. Glenn. Shot by Tolson off the mark. And the final is 77 to 72 in favor of Polytech. What a game here tonight. Yeah, both, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, man, I mean, both, this is high level. Both teams played a, a, a really good game. Um, you know, there, there wasn't a whole lot of mistakes made on either end. Polly just executed down the stretch and, um, you know, were able to shut down number three and one. Yeah. Yeah, He second and third quarter, he just went off. He was unconscious. The fourth quarter, they kind of bottled him up a little bit. All right, get, see if we can get a hold of Coach Pierce and have him come on. Now he just walked away. Can we get Coach? Co Coach? See if we can get Coach. Coach All right. Good job, guys. We're going to grab him, Coach. We're going to grab him. We'll get his little jersey swap going on at midcourt. How you doing, man? All right, we now joined by head coach of Polytech, John Pierce. That was a heck of a ball game there, buddy. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Kate came to play, which I expected. Now, you guys grabbed the early lead. They kind of had a, a big uh, advantage in the second quarter. You came out in the second half, and you just kind of played with in there in the third. But I'll tell you what, a couple of possessions in a row, Gamber with the and ones, two consecutive, and that got you the lead. You kept it. Definitely. You know, our guys, we scrapped tonight, which I knew we had to because the first time we played Kate, you know, they didn't have uh, – I think they, I think Zimmerman wasn't there, but this time he's here, and uh, he's a heck of a player. So, I mean, I expected us to have a good game against Kate. So, I mean, I'm not surprised. 
And then also the play uh, of Darrell Little. I mean, he was awesome the whole ball game, and he got I, – I don't know how many offensive rebounds and putbacks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's big for us, man. He's very, he's very big for us. By us not having a really a big team, yeah. you know, he's kind of really big for us. So, you know, we, we definitely count on him a lot. The coach of the second half, you guys are starting him out in your comeback. He kept Xavier Brewington in the game with three fouls. He got him fourth. He kind of got wrong place at the wrong time to pick up his fourth. Uh, you know, he's kind of been your floor general. Talk about, you know, your team's response to that because while he was away, you were still able to claw back into that and wait until he was able to get back in to close it out. That's the resilience of the team. We kind of like next, uh, our, our whole philosophy is next man up anyway because you never know what's going to happen in the game, so the next person yeah. got to be ready to play. Just a great job by your ball club tonight. Last time I talked to you was after the Dover win, and you talked to me about defense. There was a lot of points tonight, but still, you guys came up big when you needed it defensively. Yes. When we needed it, exactly. We didn't. We didn't have our best game tonight, of course. But you know, we. I, I mean, it's good to see us scrap stuff out because you know, in the past we, we, it, we. It's like almost like we laid down instead of scrapping it out. You know, we starting to scrap things out. So I'm very happy about that. Well, I mean, that's it, coach, right? Because come tournament time, which is the ultimate goal, right? Is the ultimate goal is to get back there, get to the Bob Carpenter Center, get to a state championship. You're gonna have to win games like this. So how important was it for your team to be tested in this way and respond? Very, very important, man. Very important. You know, you get a chance to see, you get, 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 you get a ch chance to see guys uh, in a stressful situations and yep. see how they respond to it. So, you know, it was good, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm happy we were able to pull it out. Congratulations on the win, coach. Hopefully, we see you down uh, the road here. I know you got a couple of games left in the regular season. Best of luck to you the rest of the way. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Best of luck, coach. Coach Pierce, the Polytech Panthers. And he coached him up tonight, and uh, boy, yeah. how about l the week that Darrell Little had? 57 points coming into this game tonight, and he will go over 80 points for the week. Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a that's a uh, um, player of the week type uh, <laughs> type of week for you, isn't it, Glenn? I mean, uh, impressive performance uh, and the offensive glass, Glenn. I mean, yeah, he, he tallied at least five offensive rebounds that turned into points. That he was just able to put it right back at the rim, um, and that that's a ten that's a ten point swing right there that. You know, I'm sure when Cape turns on the tape, you know, you got a close game like this, you can say, guys, if we box out, we got ourselves yeah. a, a, a great chance to come out with a victory in that game. All right, great one here tonight as we wrap things up. Our thanks to George Eilers and his staff here at Polytech High School, both coaches, Stephen Ray and John Pierce and their staff. For Nick Halliday and Pat Gariantes, I'm Glenn Frazier. Once again, thanks for viewing our live stream on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. Final score, once again, Polytech improves to 14-3 and three on the season with a 77-72 over the 11-6 and six Cape Headlopen Vikings. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great night. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned, community-based news. Free to every reader, because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home.